Hi everybody. Due to my ever-changing job situation, I've decided to go back into um, doing alterations. And um, with these jobs coming in, I will take some of those and I will be making future videos out of those jobs. This first one is a floor length dress that has a high um, lycra content in it. So it's really stretchy. And I was not sure how I was going to hem it so I am taking you through six of my seven stretch stitches on my machine and um, so that you can see what they look like and how well they work on a stretch garment and then at the end I chose the one that I thought was best for this garment and um, finish up the dress but um, hang in until the end of the video because I do have some things I talk about that I would like your feedback on um, and I would appreciate that so um, I hope you guys like this video. If you find it useful, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment box. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye. Okay, this is a floor length dress and the lady is quite petite. So she had her husband pin the hem up to where she wants it and because I know I'm going to need approximately a quarter inch to maybe three eighths of an inch I am going to adjust the hem a little bit I'm going to eyeball this I'm going to move it right here because I will need to fold it up so I'm going to pin it all the way through just so I don't lose it, that line. And I will move all the pins down and I'm only moving them on the seams, the side seams, because this area will fix itself. Now, if you look here, you see that the edge where this slit is, I line this up and if I line up the seams you see all this extra fabric here because I'm doing a narrow hem I don't have to worry about this if they wanted this 8 inch um, hem that would be a problem but because we're only working here we don't have to worry about the fullness because we're putting in such a small hem that it doesn't matter because the distance between this length and this length is practically nothing so we're not going to worry about that so I'll put these, I'll pin all the way through all layers. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. I can go back over and make sure, using the ruler to make sure that everything is even. Now, doing this on my own without the camera on me um, would not take quite as long as it will take me to do it on camera because I am trying to do it slow and make sure that I stay in the frame. The reason why, why I mention that is because I want you to see how easy it is to do this alteration. You know, people think about formal dresses um, and they think, oh my gosh, that's gonna be hard. And it doesn't have to be hard. So I'm gonna fix this. You can see how this rippling is. It's not even. So my recommendation would be when you pin this much up pin on the edges like right here and on the seams make sure the seams line up and then go through and pin the in between parts and in doing that you can pretty much gauge where that next pin would go because of the way the fabric lays. 
I need to do a video on how to read the um, read your garments when you're wearing them. Okay, so now just like I did all the other how to sew these knits type videos, um, I'm going to just sew right here. Now the only thing I'm considering with this is because this has lycra and there's a lot of stretch in it. So I have to be careful what, what um, stitch I'm using because I don't want it to stretch out and then not get it to recover properly. So um, I might just cut off some here and do some practice stitches. And then when I decide which one works best, then I'll hem it. Um, because I did a video, actually I, I did a video years ago when I first started on how to hem your t-shirt or shorten your t-shirt because t-shirts don't stretch as much as these knits. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and I will practice with a couple stitches and I will bring you along so that you can see what foot I'm using and the stitches I'm using. Okay, when you're looking at your machine and you have all these stitches and some of them are in a different color, that different color is most likely going to be your stretch stitches. And then you look up here to your stitch length selector and you can see that blue color up here. And on mine, it shows SS, so stretch stitch. You can lengthen them and you can shorten them. So these are your stitches that you know I'm choosing from today. So I have to decide which one I'm going to use and um, what works best. So on my scrap piece of fabric, because you're, you're hemming your dress, you're going to have two layers. So you want this piece to mimic your, your dress. So that means you don't wanna do it single layer because this is gonna stretch a lot easier than if you have a double layer. There's a little more resistance, there's a little more body um, in the folded uh, fabric. But if you go here and you try to sew over the seam or the, I'm sorry, the hem, um, that's not gonna give you an accurate um, representation of hemming it because there's three layers and it's already hemmed. So it's not going to stretch um, like the dress would. So we are going to fold the fabric, just one fold, and I'm going to hem it here. And I am going to do the different um, stretch stitches and then decide which one is the best one to use. I just remembered that I have no idea where my manual is. It's probably in storage. So I am going to work with the foot that I have here. It's a clear plastic, it's a zigzag foot. So whatever is going on with the stitches should be able to be done with this foot. Um, I have a roller foot, which would probably snag the fabric, so I'm not going to use that. And I don't have a walking foot, so um, I'm not using that. So I'm just gonna go down the different stitches. So this is the straight, <laughs> straight stretch stitch. Say that really fast. Okay, what I'm looking for is how much it stretches when I'm sewing. So I'm going to remove this carefully without hopefully stretching anything too much. Let me see if I can get a light on this. This is really difficult to see. Okay, you can see it's a straight stitch. And here's my fabric and it gives a little stretch. So it didn't ripple at all. So that's amazing. And what's nice about this is you don't even have to double fold if you don't want to. If you want to, you could sew here, which I'm thinking if you sew closer to the edge, it might stretch more, but we'll test it. And then you could fold it up and do it like that. So let me see what it looks like if I sew directly on the fold, which is what the way I would normally do 
um, a woven fabric because then I would trim that off and fold it up. Okay, you saw in the beginning, I had to kind of grab that fabric because the needle was starting to push it down and I just kind of gave it a little resistance and as soon as it got going, it was fine. And then I just let the feed dogs do what they're gonna do because um, the this particular stitch, it's going back and forth like this. And so you don't wanna be pulling on it. I'm gonna do a slow-mo so you can kind of get an idea of what it's doing. Okay, could you see the feed dogs? It's going it's going two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. That's how this straight stitch is done. And then I'm gonna pull this out and show you what it looks like. So this is right on the edge and still minimal rippling. And this can be, re this can be removed by steaming. So I'm going to take it to the ironing board. I'm just going to press this out. I'm not ironing. I'm just going to put heat and pressure on it and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So, and now let me correct myself. This is not on the edge of the fabric. This is on the fold of the fabric. I stitched on the fold. And when you're working with Lycra um, or anything stretchy like this, be careful with the heat and steam. This, I actually did not use any like pressure I just held my iron over it lightly and steamed it and it just pulls right back into place lycra is really good with that and so that is even a good stitch um, for uh, stretchy fabrics so I'm honestly I don't even know if I need to go through the other ones but I'm going to anyway so you guys can see all the um, stretch stitches that I'm working with so the next one is going to be a, a zigzag and this is what it looks like. Okay, I don't use this one. I've never used it actually. Um, I just haven't, I don't know what I would use it for. I don't like the way the top looks. The bottom looks a little better. It looks like my tension might be a little too tight for this stitch. So I'm not going to use this one, but it does, it does stretch. And this right here gives, it has a, a textured feeling. So I'm thinking my tension is too tight for this one. So we are going to do letter D, this one here. Okay, <laughs> this is funny because this looks nothing like that. So perhaps it's a foot issue, but this just looks like a wavy. Can you guys see that? Looks like a wavy stitch that looks nothing like what's shown there. So let's flip it over and see what it looks like on the back. Same. So I don't know what that's about unless you're, you're supposed to sew them you know, two stitches close together. You know, do one run and then the, the next one close to it. So I don't know what that's about. So let's do E. 
this one here. So this is E. This one looks like it's a stretch, it's a blind hem for a stretch fabric. So when you do this, you would have to fold your fabric in a particular way. Okay, and again, no rippling, it has a nice stretch to it. And this is actually kind of cool because I never wanted to even play with the stretch stitches. I know how to do things the way I do it. And so this is kind of eye-opening for me, and I hope it's eye-opening for you as well. So now we're going to do F. Okay, so this one also does not look quite like the picture on my machine and I don't know if it is a tension issue or if it's a foot issue or maybe I need to have a different needle, but that's what that one looks like. Wow, these are really nice, I like these. Even if it doesn't look like that, like the other ones, they're really nice stretchy stitches. Okay, and the last one is G. I had to redo this. <laughs> I, I did the G, so I thought, and I thought that looks an awful lot like the F, and then I realized I forgot to change it. So we are doing the G this time. Okay, so this one, again, I, this one looks really good and it looks like the stitch that you're trying to copy, it actually looks best when it's, the bobbin side is what looks best. So I think that's the correct side. So I do feel some puckering, which tells me that my tension is probably too tight for this stitch. But, you know, um, it's a stretch stitch. These are all really, really good. So basically, I guess what I'm looking at is which one do I want to use and how I do, it, do I want to hem it? So I can do a straight stretch stitch on the hem, trim off the excess, and it'll be done because I don't have to worry about folding it twice because Lycra has a beautiful hang and drape anyway. So I might just go with that, just the one straight stitch um, a quarter inch from the fold and be done with it. So let's do that. Okay, now we're going to actually do the dress. Now you saw that I, f I moved the pin up here. I didn't change the fold. I just moved the pin so that if I needed to fold the fabric up, I would have this extra room. But since I'm decided, I've decided to go with the straight stretch stitch, I won't have to fold this up again. So I'm just going to decide where I wanna fold it I mean, where I want to um, stitch it and then just stitch it and then trim off the excess. So I'm going to line the fold up with the edge of my presser foot and just go from there.
Okay, that's it for the stitching. Now I'm going to get my duck build scissors and I am just going to get them under here and trim it close to this. And if you do this, please be careful because you're, if you clip this side here, it's gonna show through this side. So just take it slow. You don't even have to get that close. Get, you know, an eighth of, even you, if you want to come away a quarter of an inch, just to make sure you don't clip that fabric, that would be fine because it's not gonna, un, it's not gonna come down and be seen from the other side. So that's it. And um, let's get to trimming this off. Okay, for the final step, I'm going to trim off this excess fabric. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold it like this. This is just what works best for me. Sometimes you can lay it on the table, but because this is such a drapey fabric, I feel like I would lose control of it um, and possibly have um, folds on the underside. And so my fingers are under here to kind of gauge what's going on, making sure there's no folds and that my scissors don't get too close. So I'm trying not to get too close. I, you know, my stitch, my cutting is not going to be really straight. I will do my best, but I am not going to trip over this. So this is what it's going to look like pretty much. She wants something that's quick, it's easy, it's not gonna take too long. So this is how I'm doing it. Now, I was considering doing a video on alterations and you know the expectations of people because I tend to run with um, this right-wrong thing where you know, it has to be this way because this is the right way. And honestly, when people get alterations, they could care less, mostly. Once in a while, you'll get someone who wants the inside to look as good as the outside, but most people don't even care. You know what, just fold it and sew it, make a dart, I don't care. The dart could be full of uh, sequins, they don't care. They just want the outside to look good and to have it for what, you know, their occasion. So. A client brought a dress to me yesterday it's a wedding dress and my instincts would be to um, take it apart and make sure the lining looks this way and that you, then you hem the lining then hem the dress and put it back together and she's like nope just fold it and, and hem it so I it took me a while but I realized that you got to give your customer what they want um, that it's really really hard for me especially when it's your friend and you go you know I want them I know they're they're tight with their money and I'm tight on time um, you might just have to do it you know so don't get too weird about it but <laughs> at the same time and I, I still get I still get weird about it but what I tell them is if someone's gonna look at your alterations, don't tell them I did it. <laughs> because my reputation is important to me, you know, as a seamstress. So I'm trying to meet their needs and trying to be okay with the work that I did, you know, um, but I honestly, I'm not gonna spend 10 hours on something and get paid an hour's worth or, or five hours worth, you know. So you have to draw your lines where <laughs> you want them. Um, so on her dress, I am. she just wants the front hemmed up from the side seam, around the front to the side seam. I'm going to flip and stitch. And I have a friend, another friend who I have jackets in my closet I need to do for her. And that's what I call it, flip and stitch. They don't want you to go in and do all that. They don't want um, to pay all that kind of money, but they do need it to look right on the outside. So, um, whether it's considered a sellout to your your uh, skill level or what, but to me, give your customer what they want. So I'm, I'm thinking about doing a video on that kind of stuff. And you guys let me know if you would like to see that. Um, I used to sew for uh, an independent um, bridal shop in 
in South Carolina and it was hard, you know, but they're like, nope, just even the lady that owned the shop, just, just pinch out this dart and sew it and be done. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. And when you give it back to the customer, they are so happy because the dress fits and it didn't cost them an arm and a leg. And, and that's what's frustrating for me is when you look at a lot of these major chain bridal shops, they will eat you alive in alterations, which I don't understand. You know, deaths, deaths and marriages or weddings, they just eat you up, you know, with cost of things and I don't understand it. Um, anyway, maybe it's because they have, you know, such large overhead. I don't know. So anyway, that is the hem. She says she's not real particular. It will still hang beautifully because it is um, lycra. And it's got a nice stretch. It's not going to pop any stitches. So if you guys like that video, give it a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to share and if you're not subscribed to my channel go ahead and do that and leave um, leave a comment in the comment box um, if you would like to see different ways of doing these alterations or if you guys want to do a live video and a discussion on it so um, I will see you guys in the next video thanks bye